Um, which brings me to my last point. I saw a lot of people overreacting to Gunnar Stockton's performance on Saturday, mm. which is in our notes. Um, how would you rate Gunnar Stockton's performance? I'll start with you guys before I kind of hammer it home. I'll let you go I'm first, Jay. <clears throat> oh, okay. He was typing notes. What do you got? I, I basically said that this performance was fine. It wasn't anything to be scared about. It wasn't anything to say, hey, maybe we need to start looking at Gunnar Stockton as the starter for the Georgia Bulldogs. I compared it to a bowl of spaghetti in that it's very, it's it's fine. You don't leave the table wishing you had more of it. You don't say, eh, I'm never coming back and eating this again. It's hard to mess up. It was a fine performance. I don't think there's anything bad from it. I don't think there's anything good you can really like say, hey, we need we need Gunnar Stockton. We need to see more of Gunnar Stockton. It was a fine performance. I don't think it was worth people going, he's not good. And I don't think it was worth saying he's the absolute home run hitter. Take Heisman bets as soon as you can for 2025 Gunnar Stockton. Spaghetti better the day after. Anyways, uh, Gunnar Stockton's performance... I was really I wasn't analyzing any of how the offense was really called just because it was Tennessee Tech. I just kinda had to watch him in the pocket, watch him make some throws. If he look if there's anything different that I noticed from how he played against FSU, how he played in this football game, I thought the ball looked good out of his hands, which it does. That's uh, something that Gunner is good at doing. The ball zipped, and I think that he delivered some balls on time and the offense ran fine. And that's kind of how I walked away from the game. Like I didn't I'm kind of with you in the sense of I didn't overreact in saying that Gunner is QB one in twenty. 25 or the 2026 NFL draft class. I didn't think that. And I also didn't think like, oh my gosh, Georgia better go looking for another quarterback because he just looked terrible on Saturday. So I thought Gunner looked good. Be like the Epo Ruben. <laughs> <laughs> um I saw a lot of people overreacting to this. Of course you. I mean, yes. um, let's let's be fair though. The Georgia fan base has a tendency to overreact when it comes to the quarterback position. I just don't know how they I, I don't know what you're evaluating here okay because i went and watched it and we're gonna watch it on on patreon real in depth we're gonna take it we're gonna take the whole second half with the young guys and we're gonna watch it for our patreon subscribers but i went and charted it too okay he was 10 of 12 in saturday's football game threw it 12 times all right of those 12 attempts guys nine of them were within five yards of the line of scrimmage what are y'all evaluating what are you looking at what are, you, what are you judging your, we need to go to the portal. This isn't good enough. This guy's not it. Oh, my God, we needed something. What, what are you looking at? What are you evaluating? Because I saw a bunch of maybe some RPOs working in the flat, a bunch of screen passes, a bunch of, hey, we're already up 48 points. Let's not embarrass these guys. That's what I saw. That's what I evaluated. Again, 9 of 10 or 9 of 12 attempts were 5 yards within, from the ball. All right, there's not a large sample size there. There's not a lot where I'm going to sit here and go, oh, wow. Like with Carson a couple years ago, yeah. one, the very first play I saw where I was like, oh, this guy's got it was against Oregon in that blowout, mm. third quarter. Karis Jackson's running a deep over. He throws it right on the ball, hits him in perfect stride, and they go for an 18 yard after the catch reception. There wasn't a single opportunity for Gunner to do that on Saturday. All right, there just wasn't. So, I, I'm, I'm comfortable just passing on the evaluation right now. I don't know why you guys are so quick to jump to it. Um, I understand why. The, here's my one concern. I have one, two concerns, really. I have two concerns about Gunner. One, I think you can verify after watching Saturday, which is the fact that if you went into this Gunner Stockton evaluation as a fan or as a football analyst or an, as an observer thinking that he is a dynamic athlete, that was put to rest on Saturday. All right, he couldn't ex explosively run away from Tennessee Tech defenders was he a physical runner on Saturday yes am I still involving him in the run game as a quarterback yes do I think there are 65 yard quarterback draws like Stetson Bennett in these legs no I don't think that is the case okay so I think that was proven that this isn't some dynamic leg uh opportunity like hey he's gonna be an explosive run nature no he's a quality option I think that was proven the other thing that I have genuine concerns about after watching I think we have 24 career attempts. I don't know if there's an ability to layer the football yet. You talked about the ball coming out of the hand really, really well. It does. It jumps. It's got a heavy life to the football. My question is, all right, on some of these deep overs that you guys run, on some of these balls like the the uh, Fox screen to Jaden Riddell, that ball's got to be layered. That ball's got to be thrown with anticipation. That ball's got to be thrown with a little bit of touch. And when you're just standing ten toes down and ripping balls like you're a closer and you're uh, you're Kimbrel, 
those things can be a little bit difficult. So I think those are the things right now we're moving forward. I'm looking for areas of growth, right? The area of growth is layering the football. I got to be able to see you throw with some touch. Everything else I'm fine with. I thought there were two critical misses. He short-armed a ball to Cole Spear that was a touchdown. Hmm. And you can't do that. If you're Gunnar Stockton and you're 10 toes down ripping the ball, we can't short-arm a deep ball that's a wide-open touchdown. Okay, if anything, we got to overthrow that son bitch. You're, that's your profile. That's what you're here to do, right? You're here to roll out do some play action stuff and hit the deep shots we cannot miss those if we're this guy i think carson can do some of that stuff because he's so elite in the intermediate and he's so elite with the processing he's so elite playing on time and playing ahead of the sticks gunner can't do that we got to hit the explosives when they're available and the riddell shot I already mentioned i thought that was a clear blatant miss that was a touchdown running down the sideline for this offense yeah going back to the the attempts and kind of how it was obvious that georgia wasn't really trying to get gunner stockton to push the ball down the field did that surprise you a little bit because i know i know you said that kirby told you that they see him every day in practice they don't need to see him run the offense against live bullets we kind of pushed back on that and said you know you probably do want to see some in-game action you're probably not going to see Gunnar Stockton again until the UMass game, which is at the very end of the season. So were you surprised by how little run they gave him? No. No, I, I mean, the two-minute drill going the way it did, I think that if they score in that two-minute, I think coming out of the half, it's Gunnar's second half. Mm -hmm. But the fact that they stymied and sty or, you know fizzled out in that two-minute, they wanted to give the offense another possession with the first possession in the third, um, and then they ran him out there. So, yeah, I – the the only, literally the only legitimate concern I would have is about the athleticism, the dynamic dynamicism that a lot of people think he's going to have with his legs. Which, right. by the way, if you go back and look on this channel, I'm still in a garage breaking down Gunnar Stockton's highlight tape. I compared him to Baker Mayfield coming out of high school. He's a four eight runner. He's not he's not some elite athlete. He's good enough to use his legs. He's certainly tough enough and smart enough and savvy enough to be a decent runner. But this isn't Lamar Jackson. So there's that. No. Mm -hmm.